Okay, things are getting weirder. So my original idea was to make a traditional birthday party cone hat, but with a puff ball and ear flaps just purely for weirdness. But then when I finished it, I thought to a more normal person, perhaps, it just looks like a winter ski cap, you know, to the untrained eye. So what do I name this design? Beer can birthday party hat? Or weird winter ski cap? Well, what I see is really a mix of both. A funky birthday hat that maybe a snowboarder might wear. So I'm calling it Birthday Hat Extreme. This pattern's just a tiny bit trickier since we are cutting the labels into shapes versus just rectangles. But don't you fret, I'll make it really easy and the rest of the hat is very, very close to what we've been doing so far. As usual, see the description for links to the blog tutorial and complete patterns in my shop. For this one, we're using tall cans. Worsted weight acrylic yarn. Well, let me talk about color for just a second. In this hat, I think it really makes a difference what colors you use for what effect you're going for. Choosing the heathered gray, I think makes it look much more knitwear, I think, just naturally. I was just matching the color, I didn't really think about it. But if I had like swapped it and did mostly blue colors, you know, and gray around the edges, it would have looked, I think, a lot more um, party-like, more festive, but just something to keep in mind when you're picking your yarn colors. Okay, and then we'll need a size H or I hook, a uh, paper hole punch, a pair of just regular normal utility scissors will be fine. Let's put them over here. And for this one, we'll, we're going to make a template, a paper template. So we'll need, oh, it's rolling. <laughs> we'll need a ruler. Okay whatever you got. It only has to be five inches. So even if you have a little six inch ruler, that'll be fine. And a half a sheet of paper, just scrap paper, whatever. Okay. So let us begin. So first we're going to make a paper template. Uh, so take your half a sheet of paper and fold it in half. From the bottom along the fold, measure five inches up and mark. At the top mark, draw a horizontal line a half inch in and mark it. At the bottom, measure one and three quarters inches from the fold and mark. Then from that bottom mark, draw a vertical line up a half an inch. Now connect those top and bottom outer marks. So the opened up flat measurements are one inch across the tip, three and a half inches across the bottom, and then five inches tall at the center. So stab your can away from the cute parts of the labels that you want to save, and cut up to and around the top, very close to the curve and then the bottom of the can as low as you can cut. Now cut that piece in half and you'll have two big can labels. Continue like that until you have six labels total. Use your paper template and a permanent marker to outline the labels where you want them. Now, it's possible your labels might come up a little short of the template, but that's okay. It really won't make much difference in the end. You'll just have to trust me.
So once you've cut out six pieces, uh, you wanna carefully round out the sharp corners. Now on this one, you have to be really careful to trim as little as possible because we wanna keep the size and shape as close to original as we can. Okay, you wanna punch the holes about a half inch apart-ish and about a quarter inch from the edge. Um, we're gonna punch two holes at the top corners, which will be a little closer together, four across the bottom, and then six down the sides. crochet time. Okay, we're going to single crochet all the way around, working three stitches into each hole and five in the corners. To join these, hold two labels back to back and starting in the corner stitches, single crochet through both layers all the way across to the opposite corner. Now join your first label to the last to create a cutoff cone shape. I feel a little bit dirty every time I refer to the tip, but that's probably just me. First, we're going to finish the edge with a straight single crochet all around. Um, I like to integrate the seam stitch by working two singles together um, by the seam, but you can just skip the seam stitch altogether, it's fine. The rest of the tip will be worked in double crochet and will be decreasing each round. So for round one, I like to start with the decrease near the seam and then I'll work four more doubles and then decrease again 
and repeat that all the way around. So for each round, we'll work one less stitch between the decreases, okay? So for round two, work three doubles between the decreases, and so on until you get to round five. And round five should be just double crochet two together all the way around. I like to slip stitch through the very tip at the end to close it up and then tie it off. First, finish the bottom edge with a straight single crochet all the way around. Now we'll switch to doubles and work three rounds of straight double crochet. Flaps. Yay! I don't know why they're so fun. Okay, they just are. I don't make the rules. Starting at the center of any label, work 14 double crochets. Now turn and repeat for four rows total. For rows five and six, decrease at each end and then tie off. and then make another flap on the opposite side. Starting at the center back, single crochet until you reach one of the ear flaps. Then working down the sides, single crochet, two stitches into each double. I like to work into the stitch rather than around it when I can so there's less of a visible gap. Yeah. 
when you get to the corner stitches, just work one single into each of those corners. That'll help round out the sharpness there. So this is just my super old school way of making pom-poms that I've used since like grade school. Okay, very simple. Just a little piece of cardboard about the same size as my pom-pom that I want. Secure your yarn ends in the notch and then wind the yarn without stretching it. I used three strands and I wrapped them about 30 times. Cut two lengths of yarn and use your crochet hook to pull one end under the wrapped yarns. Then tie them tightly in the middle and repeat it on the other side. Now cut the yarns at the top and bottom of the cardboard. Now tie the two bundles together really tightly using all four of the long ties that you have. Now I'm going to choose two of those long threads that I'm going to tie onto my hat and then the other two I'll trim with the rest of the little yarns. So holding the long ones, start trimming. The sides will be shorter so you want to trim everything else to match the shortest yarns that you have on there. Just keep turning and trimming and looking from different angles and don't forget the area where your fingers are. Just turn it all around and keep trimming until it looks kind of round. Now tie it on to the tip of your new beer can party hat extreme. I mean, call it what you will. This will make an awesome Santa hat, don't you think? So get ready for that video. And you think I'm done? <laughs> Not even. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.